Hey, welcome back to Rob's Garage Woodworking. Today I'm going to show you how I made these workshop cabinets. Now, these are upper cabinets, very similar in construction to your kitchen cabinets at home. So, um, they're actually really easy to build. They're not very expensive. And I'll show you the breakdown and I'll show you how I built them. Alright, so here's the plans for my cabinet. So I started off with the cabinet. This one is 23 and a half wide by 21 inches tall. Alright, and then, then you have to break down all the components. So the top and the bottom are 22 and a quarter by 12 and there's two of those. The sides are 21 by 12, there's two of those. Shelves are 10 and a half by 22 and a quarter and there's one per cabinet. And then the back, I did a solid back on these and I did 22 and a quarter by 19 and 3 quarters. And then the doors worked out to 11 inches by 19 and 3 eighths. And there's obviously two per cabinet. So then you have to make the cutting list. Now I, I used 5 eighths melamine um, sheet stock for this. So what I did was I made a cutting list for each section. So the top and bottom, 22 and a quarter by 12 and then I had a little bit left over. There's 16 pieces of those, so one sheet for that. The sides, 21 by 12, a little bit left over, 16 pieces, so one sheet for that. The back, I had a little bit left over, and it's 22 and a quarter by 19 and 3 quarters for eight pieces. Then the shelf, I had a small chunk left over, uh, 10 and a half by 22 and a quarter, eight pieces there. And then the doors, just small chunks left over again and that is 11 by 19 and 3 8 and I made 16 pieces so that's one two three four five sheets of uh, four by well it's slightly larger than four by eight these sheets of melamine so the total cost for my cabinets so I made eight cabinets so I used five sheets of MDF with the edge banding cost me two hundred dollars Two packs of inset door hinges were 67, one pack of drawer pulls was 35, uh, 300 screws was 21, brad nails, they're not really expensive and I have a bunch of those, they didn't really cost me anything. So my total cost was $323, which is $40.38 per cabinet. And Alright, so the cheapest cabinets I found were on sale for what they said was half price and they retailed for eighty dollars but the regular price was a hundred and forty dollars so I don't know how that's quite half price but that's pretty funny I need a flat assembly surface so I'm going to start by putting on the top and bottom and I'm going to use one and a half inch brads, so we're going to line it up. It's easier if I put it right on the edge here. Let's see if you guys can see that. Yeah, you can. All right, I'm going to put this right on the edge, slide it in position, line that up. Okay. I'm just going to do four to start. Spin it around right on the edge so that I can get my gun. So I don't want my gun to be on an angle, so you have to have your gun straight or else your nails will uh, poke through. <laughs> so I have to make sure that that's good, that I'm shooting straight. Okay. So I'm going to put the top on here, or the sides, these are the sides. So we'll line that up. Once again, line it up as good as possible. And tack that in. And then the sides as well. We're going to tack these in. Okay. 
Okay. This side. Line it up. This one looks really good. Now the shelf fits inside. So you want to decide. Okay, so the shelf's going to fit inside like this. Okay, and what I'm going to do, since you guys can't really see it well, I've got some spacers. So I know how high my shelf is. And, okay, so I put my spacer in here, and that's 12 inches. That's what I'm using because that's how high I want my shelf. You can have it anywhere you want, but I'm going to make this shelf permanent because it's going to add strength to my cabinet. Um, you can choose to drill holes in the sides and make your cap your shelf adjustable. That's fine, but that's not how I'm going to do it. So I'm going to flip this over and put in my two spacers and my st spacers. Ugh, I'm stuck on my cabinet here. Stand up a little bit, and then I'm just going to push this down and in, and. Going to put three nails on the shelf. Okay, so that's it for the brad nails. So now I'm going to reinforce it with screws. So I'm going to put uh, three screws in a, a drill bit from uh, Craig Jig. So I'm going to use this to countersink my holes because I'm going to use these cabinet screws and these are the same screws that come with Craig Jig, uh, with the Craig stuff for the Craig Jig. Uh, these have a flat shoulder on it and these are number eight by one and a quarter. All right. And these ones are Robertson. So the square hat, I don't know if you can see it really well there. Anyway, so I'm going to just drill these out. Just to countersink it enough so that the screw goes in all the way. The head doesn't sit out. Now, so. Screw these in tight. All right, so make sure that these don't sit proud. This one's not deep enough. So we'll give this one an extra little shot. And screw that back in. Okay. Now, for these here, Three again. I'm going to do two on my shelf.
screw these in. These are all in far enough. Good. Now we're going to do the shelf in the back. So we're going to put our spacer down on the bottom because our shelf is 5 8 And then it's not this one, it's to the side for this measurement. This one here, nice and straight. Slide this down. I'm going to use this as well as a spacer. out of the way. And shoot your last three screws. Alright, so here's our cabinet. So we have three, six, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven, that's twenty-two. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 28, 9, 30, 31. So there's 31 screws in each one of these cabinets. Alright, so that's it. That's the cabinet. Now we're ready to put on our edge banding. You gotta put the edge banding on the fronts. And uh, you can put it on the top if you want. And on the bottom if you want. So under here. I think I will put my edge banding on the bottom, but I'm not sure if I'm going to do it on the top or not. All right, so now I'm going to put edge banding on the cabinet. It's not the proper way to do it. You're supposed to do your edge banding before you put the cabinets together. But I was in a rush, so I'm doing it last. It's for my shop. I'm not super worried about it, right? So here we are. We got our iron set to the cotton setting. I've got it cut, uh, set to like a low cotton setting, like four, four and a half. Um, but that's still pretty high. So the iron's quite hot. We're going to run the iron over the edge banding. So I'm cutting the edge banding to size first and then running the iron over it and then trimming it off after. Like I say, it's not really the proper way, but uh, yeah, that's the way I'm doing it this time, okay? So. And I measure my edge banding out right to the mark. Cut it with a chisel or a pair of scissors. All right, so I'm going to line it up. I'm going to start from the center. I'm going to get it started here. Work my way to the edges. And I push down on it. And go right to the edge. Alright. Then I'm going to take a wooden block. I'm going to go over it with a wooden block. Just push down. Make sure that it's in all the way. Okay, looks pretty good. Turn it around, get my next edge ready. Alright, so I've got my big chisel, and I've got it sharpened. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start, not quite at the edge, but 
I'm gonna bring the chisel in. I'm just gonna kind of work it like this until I get even with the side, and then I'm going to just hold on to it like this. Hold it flush. I'll hold on to it like this, and I'll just gently push this down like this, and just try to keep it flat. And that works ridiculously well. Okay. But the edge is a little sharp still. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a small file. And we're just going to go over the edge like this. And just soften that edge up. And if you have a spot that's not perfect, like it was a little bit more of an overhang, then you can take your file and go over that spot a little bit more. And that will shave it down to size. So, we're just going to soften that edge up, and that's that. Now, I'm going to do the whole rest of the cabinet just like that. Okay. Alright, so now we're going to make the doors for the cabinet. So the cabinet doors, um, these are inset doors, so they go inside, they don't go around the face. So you have to get inset hinges as well, um, special hinges for the special doors. So. These ones, you have to leave uh, 3 sixteenths 3 sixteenths of a space around, all the way around each door. Um, that's why it's kind of recommended. So, um, between the dimensions that I have here and the fact that it's going to be in shop and my walls aren't perfect, mine are a little bit off of the 3 sixteenths. Plus, I have to add the edge banding, and the edge banding is, well, I don't even know that's a sixteenth of an inch thick, but anyway. So my measurements for this are 11 inches wide by 19 and 7 sixteenths. All right, so 19 high, 19 and 7 sixteenths, and 11 inches wide. All right, and then I'm just going to cut those and band, do the edge banding. Alright, so I have my stop lock set here at 19 and 7 uh, sixteenths. So, I'll just make sure I don't have any dirt over there. Some sawdust blocking the way. So, I'll bring it down, push it up tight against the fence. Make all my cuts. So now we're going to cut these to the 11 inch width. So now what I'm doing here is just finishing the edge banding. So I've done the sides, I'm just doing the bottoms and tops now. down on it a little bit more make sure the glue is adhered to the whole thing I'm just using my workmate 200 I had this forever probably bought this in like 1990 <laughs> So, I'm making doors for my cabinets that I'm making right now. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the crappy side for the inside, the one that has more tear out. My hinges I'm going to put at the 3 inch mark, so I'm going to mark those. 
three inch using a measuring tape and a china marker. And I'm just going to run a line down with my square, my tri square here. And. Okay. Now. And what I'm going to do is there's a, a center line here where it reads zero. And then right here, there's a little indent mark. So I'm going to line up my zero and my indent mark. And I'm going to use my clamps. I clamp against my work surface. Yeah. What happened there? Why is this loose? Still loose. All right. So I'm going to push it up against the, push this up against the back, line it up, center it, clamp it. You need two clamps for these. And just make sure that it's all the way, clamp it, put this on, this rotates, right? So you put this in, hold it, kind of let it rest. Now you have to turn this, push it and turn, twist it in to lock it. And then your drill will hold right there. And you can see it's got stops at the locks. And then just drill away. I think it's time for a battery change. Okay. And that's it. That's how simple it is to use. Now, it also has these two little holes. So your hinge fits in here. And these little holes, you're supposed to take your drill your tiny little drill bit here and drill in here and here and that's supposed to line up with these two holes of your hinges but this hinge that I have it doesn't line up so if the holes were up here where up here and started down there it would line up perfectly and then you're all set to put your hinges in but unfortunately where this is doesn't line up with my hinges so what I have to do is I have to put my hinges in, line them up as best I can, and I'm just going to freehand those. All right, so now I've got my cabinet doors, I've got the hardware on, and we want to find out how they're going to fit properly in the cabinets. So what I've done is I've measured them out, I've uh, made my first sample, and uh, I used like a trial board, I didn't use my first door uh, for any of that stuff, right? And then I uh, found out where the hinges set the best, and the hinges, these ones came adjusted all the way to the front, so those have to be adjusted back uh, about halfway, and then you can adjust your door better. Um, so after figuring all that stuff out, I've made a little template. And the template's quite simple. It's a piece of wood, it says top and bottom. The, those arrows go to the outside, like the top and bottom of the cabinet. And then I've had my trials, right? And the holes in the middle here are the ones that, uh, that's the template settings for this. So I'll show you how it works. Pretty simple. 
take it like this. It says top and bottom. So put the screwdriver or the drill in, push it all the way to the back, drill all the way down until it stops. And for the other side over here, we just flip it over again. This is top and bottom. And drill them out. And that's the holes for the expansion side. So these expansion ones, so you can adjust your door uh, up and down. And then after I get these, after I mount my cabinets and have the doors in and adjust my doors perfectly, then I'll drill out the holes for these two, for the more permanent uh, screws to hold it in place permanently. All right. All right. So my measurement for the center of the handle is four and a half inches. So four and a half. And I'm gonna do the doors in pairs. So I'm gonna do the left and the right at the same time. So I'm gonna use my China marker because I'm using black melamine. All right. And then I'm just gonna use my square and I'm gonna make a line on both sides. And that way, when you set your jig, so I've already set my jig, so it's gonna be, the door handles are gonna be an inch and a half in, right? So I'm gonna slide that up. Right here, there's a little indent there, and there's a hole there, and another little line at the bottom for your center line. So I'm gonna line that up. And then you can either freehand this or you can clamp it. I always like to clamp it. So I'll center it up. Put my clamp on it and then use a 3 16 drill. What size is that again? 3 16 3 16 drill. And we're just going to drill through. All right. And then we're just going to drill it through. All right, now what you can do, just put your screws through. All right, so, tighten this up a little bit. So that's it. That's your handle installed on your door. All right. It's that simple. So these are going to be quite high. So I want my door handles low. All right. So here's a little trick about hanging cabinets. So what you want to do is find where your studs are on the wall and mark them off. So I've got them marked off here and on my wall and up at the top as well. So when I hang my cabinets, I measure up to the other cabinet or to the wall or wherever that you're mounting it from. And you measure out, so this one, the stud is at two inches and 18 inches. Now, you measure out from your cabinet and it's almost three quarters of an inch. So I'm going to take two inches minus three quarters of an inch is an inch and a quarter and a mark there and the other measurement was what 18 18 so eighteen inches and take three quarters off of that and seventeen and a quarter okay same with the bottom and use a drill bit that's just a little skinnier than the uh, than the screw, a little bit skinnier than the screw, not by much. And I'm gonna drill where I marked it.
Then I use three inch cabinet screws and I'm just gonna start these. That way I don't have to worry about uh, when you start them, you don't have to worry about uh, trying to grab them with your hands after. You have one hand holding your cabinet up and the other hand you can have on your drill. So just makes life easier. I'm just going to stand on my step stool here, lift this up into place. And luckily I have a spot to rest it on. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to clamp it to the other cabinet. Clamp the two cabinets together. Uh, my walls are a little uneven here. And try to level it as best as possible with the uneven walls. <laughs> I'm going to use one inch screws for this. There we go. All right, so we're putting the doors up here. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this about halfway in and then I would normally set this screw about halfway down, but I'm already on my seventh cabinet, so I know pretty much where it's going to be set. So there's all these little indents on here, so you can measure where your uh, screw has to be. So yeah, normally what I would do is I would adjust this halfway, and I would adjust this one halfway, and that way when you put your doors in, uh, they line up easier. All right. I have the handle goes on the bottom. So I line this up. I already have these holes pre-drilled because I set up a, uh, a template for these off of my first cabinet. And what I'm going to do is just screw them in. So if I line up one of the holes, screw it in, but not tight. Just let it sit there loose. And I'll put four screws in. Now, so the door, you can slide your door up and down. I'm going to use a shim. I'm gonna have the shim, the door sit approximately here on the shim, because that'll give me the space that I want. So, put my shim in, then with your hand, Phillips screwdriver. I tighten that up. All four of the screws. So now you look at your gap around the door. So there's more of a gap here and less of a gap there. So we have to adjust that. Look at your gap down the side of the door. Okay, so that looks pretty good. At the bottom, there's a pretty big gap. So we're going to adjust that. So to get the gap top and bottom, like for this part, we would use this screw here and we would slide this back and forth. And to get this, the door, this gap here at the bottom of the door and this gap here, we're gonna adjust this spot right here. So let me get the uh, camera in a better angle for you to see this. All right, so hopefully you can see this a little bit better. It's hard because the cabinets are black, but there's quite a gap here and a big gap there. So I'm going to turn the one spot and you can watch it actually decrease and increase. See how the gap is getting bigger here and bigger here. And if I turn it the other way, 
you can actually see the gap get smaller. So we just don't want it to interfere with this part of the cabinet. So I need enough of a gap so that my door will open and close properly. Like this. Okay. And it's not rubbing, it looks pretty good. Gap at top and bottom aren't too bad. Now I'm gonna put the other door in and then I'm gonna balance the two doors together. And find the pre-drilled hole, line it up, shoot it. Once you shoot your first one, your door will sit there. And find the remaining screws. Get the shim. Where did I put my shim? Here it is. Now on this door, I have to put the shim in a little bit further. And we're going to tighten the top and bottom screws. There we go. Doesn't look too bad. That doesn't look bad. Let's see how they close together. Well, not too bad. Um, need a bigger gap here, a smaller gap there. The gap down the side looks pretty good. Just have to adjust this one a little bit. So I'm going to reduce that and increase this one. Yeah, not bad. So we just want our gaps to be pretty even all the way along on the edges all the way along here and this back gap reasonably close you know it's in your shop it doesn't have to be perfect this isn't your kitchen but uh, you know it's good practice all right so after you've adjusted your doors you've put in your uh, screws in these elongated holes here so there's four holes so after you've adjusted your doors perfectly then you want to put your screws into these holes here, these ones, all right? And those ones, you want to pre-drill them dead center. And then after you put your screws in, that'll hold this perfectly from now on. And then after you do that, you're going to have to readjust your doors just a little bit, okay? Because it's going to flatten this out a little bit. And it wasn't quite flat uh, the last time when you, uh, when you were working on it. So... Do that and then uh, then you're done all right so here's some of the stuff i've just thrown in the cabinets quickly i've got my hot tub supplies i've got all my spray cans then in this one here it's tall enough to hold all your spray cans and like full-size uh, propane bottles and things like that so it gives you a lot of space and i've got eight of these cabinets so what i've done is i've taken my cabinets and i've matched them up so that they match up with the lower cabinets. So the two upper cabinets are the same size as one lower cabinet. And the space goes all the way along. So everything matches up top and bottom. And they're centered where my saw is as well. So, and that's that. And my cabinet at the end, because I've got space for my um, shop vacs and my dust collection system, which isn't hooked up yet, and this cabinet at the very end is a little bit smaller and I just made that to fit. And that way it looks the same as all the rest. You can't even tell that it's smaller, which is pretty cool. And that way everything fits and lines up perfectly. Anyway, I hope uh, I helped you guys out here. It's not that difficult to make this stuff. I used sheet stock for these, but to make it a little bit easier, if you can find uh, shelf board for this stuff. Uh, you can find melamine shelf board and the melamine shelf board will come around a 12 inch. Sometimes it's 15 inches wide or 14 inches, but uh, I found it many times for around 11 and three quarters, 12 inches wide, and you can make nice cabinets out of that. Uh, I did have a, f a problem finding 
the black colored melamine so I ended up with sheet stock <laughs> which was a lot more difficult to work with and the the price is roughly the same if you were to buy the shelf board versus the sheet stock it's a little bit cheaper with the sheet stock so anyway I hope that helped you out I hope that gave you some cool ideas for your workshop and thanks a lot for watching